Um, yeah, so kind of a long story. I'll try and make it short. Um, <laughs> but out, of, out of high school, um, I played basketball through high school. Um, didn't really um, look to go play anywhere. I was going. I went on a two year church mission, so um, that was kind of my focus. Got back. Um, kind of wanted to play, but wasn't a super huge deal. Anyways, crazy, crazy things happened. I got a call from my travel coach um, who knew a, a community college coach up in Washington State that had some injuries and had some kids like kicked off the team. So they needed somebody to come in halfway through the season. Um, and so um, they were actually looking for my brother who was on his church mission. Um, and I ended up, they said he's he's not available, but his brother's sitting around doing nothing. So um, ended up getting to go try out and ended up playing the rest of the year there. Um, so that was a great experience. Um, after that, coach kind of got forced to resign. He had to go a different way. Um, met a girl I wanted to get married. Didn't have time for um, work, um, this girl, and basketball. So I decided to move on. Uh, moved back to Utah. Was going to go to school for architecture. Um, but when I got back, I needed a job. And my cousins were in a training program um, that was looking for more trainers. So I was like, okay, that'd be cool to teach basketball as my side job while I get my degree. Um, and anyway, started getting really involved with it, really enjoyed it. Um, I, I didn't know at the time that you could like actually go full time with training and stuff like that. So again, it was just a side job, but about a year through it, um, I was really enjoying it. Um, I got along really well with the owner um, and it was a big company. There's, um, I think... 20 something trainers in the company. So it was a, it was a big thing, mm -hmm. um, but kind of worked my way up. I was doing the marketing for the whole company, doing a lot of stuff, got the opportunity. So he has licenses so um, people can buy into the business. And um, I took the opportunity to do that. So I had this little area that was mine, basically my own business. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's kind of how I got into the business side of running it. Um, and that was about four years ago. Um, and then towards the end of that four years, I started really like, again, at the beginning, I was just kind of getting into it, learning everything. Mm -hmm. and then the last two years, I started like do my own research and kind of figure out, you know, I was like, how can I be better? How can I make the program better? Mm -hmm. um, the thing that I kind of learned and um, kind of went a different way than the company was. Mm -hmm. And we tried to make it work. He was, the owner was really like flexible for me and tried to let me do things, but got to the point where, we just didn't agree on where we wanted to go. So um, about just last October, um, we came to an agreement and I was able to get out of the non-compete um, mm -hmm. and he let me kind of go off on my own to start my own business. So now that's what I have, ice basketball. Um, so it's my own business. Um, I run it by myself, um, nobody else. And that's kind of, it's been five, five-ish months now and that's kind of where I'm at. So it's been awesome. quite, but here I am. Cool. So why why did you decide to call it ice basketball? Um, I mean it's nothing too crazy, but it stands for <laughs> confident and effective. Um, and so that's kind of my goal with my players is to uh um help them help them do that. So one of the main reasons I wanted to split was the previous company was um it was just shooting, so we mm -hmm. just worked on shooting. Um, and it was really just all technique stuff. There's no live play. There's no defense um nothing like that which is great right and a lot of players need yeah. that um but what i saw was there were a lot of skilled players that didn't know how to use those skills in the game and so yeah. that we started to really like diverge on our philosophies with i wanted to do more of that so that's kind of where we started. awesome so tell us a little bit about ice basketball then what, what what do you guys specialize in um so i do small group training mm -hmm. um so um, our sessions have up to six players, um, like I mentioned that, so we can really train the application of the skills. So, yeah. um, like I have them come warm up and we go right into some live com competitive drills, obviously still focused on skill building, but mm -hmm. live competition. And then, um, we kind of break it down and we go back to the more traditional stuff and then throw them right back into a live situation. So, um, again, my goal is to build a skill, but then help them apply it, um, mm -hmm. and that's all I do is just the groups. I don't do any one-on-one -on -one stuff. I don't do any, um, I mean, I do clinics, but it's kind of the same idea, six players. Um, mm -hmm. I try and cap it out. So um, that's really where I kind of try and specialize the the small groups. 
So what's, what what would you say is one thing that you're seeing in, in, in basketball at the moment with the clients you're working with in terms of like what, what do players need the most help with? So I think it's that it's that same thing. So obviously like in Utah, like AU is like a big thing, right? Mm -hmm. So like in the summer, kids are going to I had some kids that played like 20 games in a week. Yeah. Um, you know. Um, but the problem with that is that in a game, unless you're the best player on the team, you only have the ball in your hand for about two minutes for each game, right? Yeah. And then you got all the travel trying to get there and all that stuff. So it's a lot of wasted time, right? Mm -hmm. But obviously you still need to do it. So, you know, I um, still want to play five on five. Mm -hmm. And then again, with my previous company, it was all one on no stuff, right? Which is great. You have the ball the whole time um, and you get to build skill that way. But it's the transfer in between that I think is the main issue, right? Mm -hmm. Which I, um, basketball players are starting to, you know, find the research on and do a little bit more of that. Um, again, you need all three components, but it's that small group stuff where mm -hmm. still focus on specific skills. You have the ball in your hands more, yeah. um, but it, you can still apply live situations, decision making um, that will help it transfer to the game. So I think that's the biggest thing missing. It used to be that. Um, pick up basketball in the park and mm -hmm. with friends kind of where you would get that small group that two on two three on three stuff yeah um, with how big kids are on AU and how much emphasis parents put on that mm -hmm. um, you know we kind of lose that that pickup here especially in Utah it's, I know it's a little different in other places but mm -hmm. Utah is a little crazy that way cool so for for coaches that aren't based in the u.s can you explain a little bit about what what a aau is yeah so it's kind of the, considered the i would call it the competitive off season right so you have um, your high school season november through february um ish um, but aau has really become big because that's kind of considered the uh, where college coaches go recruit actually right because they be in a gym with hundreds of players that are all high level players, all playing against high level players, as opposed to trying to make it to each high school throughout the season. Um, so it really got big for the recruiting aspect of it. Um, and that's kind of, it's, it's really just huge. So like city leagues and comp leagues are considered like minor, minor stuff. If you really want to be a good player, you got to be doing AU, you got to travel out of state, right? want to get into the AU rankings if you want to go division one and um, play at the big college. So um, it's a big deal. And um, obviously it's important to play against the best competition, um, which is what I think AU can provide. And again, the exposure um, to all the college coaches. Um, that's why it's super huge, um, especially in the States. Awesome. And we get, on, we get asked on a regular basis because a lot of coaches are kind of competing against these AAU U clubs because they're they're struggling to get committed clients because they're so committed to their teams. So has that has that been something you've you've come across in your business? Um, I've run into that a little bit, uh, mostly in the summer. Mm -hmm. um, which talking to again, Utah is is weird for some reason, but. I'm talking to other trainers. They're like, "Hey, it's the summer. This is when we get the work in, right? Players have more time." And I'm like, "Summer's where I struggle the most because they're out of town every week for a tournament." Um, but other than that, um, like the parent parents here are like super invested in helping their kids be the best they can be, whether that's for the kids or for themselves. But um, you know, so most of the kids I have are willing to train the whole year. Um, and they really just take a break in the summer if they're out of town, literally out of the country. Um, but as long as they're in town, pretty much everybody I have is is here and, and working. So, and is there any piece of advice you would give any any basketball trainer that is watching and maybe is struggling with with getting their clients committed during a an AAU season? Um, one of the biggest things that has been a huge help with my new business after I've split um, was adding the online component of my training um, and having our, our training app that gives them the workouts throughout the week. They can message me, um, send me videos. Like when, um, when I'm on a sales call, I say, if you're out of town, right, you can't make the session, but you're at a tournament, 
and their shot, they feel like they're not shooting very well. You can just upload the video real quick, send it to me. I'll send it right back. Right. And you can start coaching even when you're across the country. Right. Um, I think that's been a huge selling point as far as the program goes on um, helping parents and kids feel comfortable signing up, even though they know they're going to be gone for like maybe even a whole month of the summer um, because they coaching, even if they're not there in person. Awesome. Love that. So let me take you back to when you first started uh, your business. So what what was one of the biggest uh, obstacles you faced at the beginning? Or may, maybe you currently are facing it. Um, I mean, the biggest, biggest struggle is always just um, how to find players, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and get in front of people. Um, that's always been the struggle. Um, like before, so a little more background uh, with my previous business right the biggest struggle was gym time i know that's the biggest struggle for most people trying to get into it um, is consistent gym time we were struggling with it um, but eventually we found a place um so now we have a lease i got it is a five-year lease so i still have about two and a half years left on it um so having that be covered um the biggest struggle has just been finding kids to to fill it up right mm-hmm. and the biggest, I guess the biggest fear is I have this lease payment. So if I, all of a sudden, all my kids quit, <laughs> then I'm stuck with this lease payment and I'm not making any money. Um, but other than that, like, again, being um, part of the the business group with, uh, with Ben and you guys has been so much less stressful. <laughs> and it's, like, it, it's hard to think of like a big obstacle right now, um, just because there's so much covered in there and, uh, you know, once you like, even just like following the YouTube videos, yeah. improved my business so much that even when obstacles came up, it was like, okay, I know how to deal with this though. Right. Even if the answer isn't in the YouTube videos or the, or the group, mm-hmm. um, it's easier to deal with, you know. That's awesome. So uh, what piece of advice would you give uh, any basketball trainer uh, that is looking to, to maybe get their first client or wants to grow? What's that? What's one piece of advice that's that's maybe helped you to gain new clients? Um, do free stuff, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. you know, um, absolutely. Because you know, to really like sell your program, you have to have like results that you can show. And when you're just starting out, right, you don't have any results to show. You have the ideas, and they should work, right? You believe they're going to work, but um, you can't expect really expect people to pay a high premium for somebody that's just starting out, right? Mm-hmm. So um, really, like I did when I started, it was all like free clinics. I was doing one like every single week um, just to get kids in the gym. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I got maybe one out of the eight players every time signing up. But do that for eight to 10 weeks. That's, you know, eight to 10 players that you sign up and then it builds from there. So um, don't be afraid to do free stuff is Mm -hmm. kind of the thing as far as getting started. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And one of one of the main reasons I find with a lot of coaches that that we do give that piece of advice to is that they don't want to 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 hand out free stuff because of the investment they have to make. So, for example, if you're running a free clinic in in a gym, obviously you have to put some money down to to rent it out. Um, so would you know is it worth the investment? Um, yeah, I mean, so again, in my situation, I had a gym I was paying for the whole month already. I had the lease, but then I was also paying, um, it was about at least 75 to a hundred bucks per clinic in paid advertising just to get the clinics out there. Right. Wow. So I was putting that money out. Um, if nobody signed up, then that's just money gone. Right. Yeah. Um, but you know, if you like, if you really believe in it and you just think of it as like, you're just giving them a taste of the program, right? Mm-hmm. Because it's so much easier to sell them when you actually talk to them about the details. Um, and it says you get this every week. Plus, like for me, you get the online part, which you didn't get to experience in the clinic, right? Yeah. So you could just come to the clinics, but then you won't get the online stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's just every once in a while, there's no consistency. So uh, yeah, I, I think it's, again, it's hard to put money down and not get money back. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know, if I'm paying a hundred bucks and I get six kids at the clinic, 
one of them signs up for a year, right? Then I'm my return on that hundred bucks is at least fifteen hundred dollars. So it's definitely worth it. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So where where do you see this uh, this industry going in the next two to five years? Um, I think it's gonna grow. I mean, it's getting to the point where if you don't like if you're not involved with personal training or private training program, then you're probably not going to make it to a high level, um, which is unfortunate for the kids that really can't afford it, um, which which is why I think it's important to provide opportunities like that, like free clinics and online training, stuff like that. Um, online part's going to be a big thing, right? Um, again, I think that's why I'm able to separate myself a little bit um, because there's a lot of trainers popping up, right? Um, not many of them have an online program to go with the in-person stuff. So I think that's going to get bigger. I'm really interested. I've kind of looked into it a little bit. Um, I'm interested to see where virtual reality goes um, with training, um, especially like the mental side of it. Like, I think it'd be way cool to put on one of the, you know, headsets and just <laughs> experience like yeah. NBA finals last two minutes through the eyes of one of the players. Right. Yeah. And just like, hear the crowd and everything. So I'm interested to see where that goes. I don't know as far as like actually uh, shooting a basketball in virtual reality, but the mental, component, I think of that sounds really cool. So there's lots of ways it could go. Um, yeah. You know, people are smart and creative and it's just going to get more and more innovative and new stuff will come out. That'll be weird for a while. And then eventually it'll be accepted. So. Yeah. 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 I agree. So you've been you've been part of our our coaching program for a while now. Uh, talk to us or, or t tell tell the audience about your experience uh, within make money coaching sports. Uh, what's something that you've gained from it? Has it helped your business to grow? Would you recommend it to other other trainers? Yeah. Um. So like I said, is that I've only been, actually been in the group about three months. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was about, I think, two years ago, I discovered Ben's videos on YouTube um, and just started following those. And I think it was, I don't know what day of the week it was, every Friday or something, he would put out a new one and I would watch it every single time. And, um, you know, it was just, it was so different than what we were doing, right? Mm -hmm. um, as far as like the long-term commitments, right? Because we tried to tell, sell people on that, but they were just like, oh, a month in, we want to quit. Like, we have stuff going on. So, yeah. and they weren't signed to anything, so I couldn't really stop them. Um, and I'm not a conf confrontational person, so I didn't like to say, well, you said you'd come for a while, you know, so I hated that. But um, anyway, so watching all this stuff, um, the YouTube videos were great. Um, I had talked to Ben once or twice and um, really just did not have the money to join as much as I wanted to. Mm. Uh, but took a, I think it was the last year, about a year ago took a four week course about emails and promotions and that was awesome. Um, and so, you know, everything I've gotten had gotten was great. Um, I just mm -hmm. didn't run funds. And then, um, towards the end of last year, it had been a couple of months since I started my new one. I was like, you know, all this stuff is like really, really working. Um, I want to go like full into it. Um, you know, Ben sent out an offer and I took it. Um, being a part of the the full group the past three months has been like even better right um mm. and one of the coolest things again when i got back from playing college i, d I didn't know that this could be a full-time thing right yeah and even if it could i was thinking you know 50 60 thousand dollars a year max right that's the most i'm ever going to get to so i gotta go get a real job <laughs> um, <laughs> you know being yeah. part of the just you know, we have the online community, you can post your wins and everything. And that's one of the coolest parts is just seeing all these people that are like, oh, I just hit 20,000 this month. And I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> um, I'm not even close, to that, but that's cool that, um, you know, it's increased those levels. So just that part has kind of opened my mind and said, no, I can get to that point, right? Yeah. And by using all this stuff, but being able to be in there and, um, you know, throw up an email and say, hey, what do you guys think about this? Does this work and get feedback? And I'm um, not just from um, you and Ben and Nick, but everybody in the group, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then just the content in there, again, is so much different than what most trainers are doing, right? Doing, yeah. 
and yeah. you just have no idea that it, that's a possibility until like you get in there and hear it yeah you know, like, that makes way more sense than the way i'm trying to do it so yeah there's in there and you know again being part of the group and just seeing everybody win you know there was a uh, brianna posted that steph curry followed her the other day and i was like that's pretty <laughs> awesome. you know um <laughs> stuff like that is super super cool um, yeah group, apart from just like the actual content which again is um, so much better than kind of the normal um, mm. trainer policies that people follow mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. cool so how, how many clients are you currently working with right now um, I just hit 40 yesterday. Congrats. Yeah. So, and that's, um, yeah, in October, I had to start from scratch. So I had zero, um, mm-hmm. about five and a half months have gotten up to 40. So. Very good. Very good. So, and that, that's all in groups, correct? Yeah. Awesome. So that's a massive growth within, within quite a short, short period of time. So what what does it take to get to that that growth in such a short period of time? What what do you need as a as a business owner? The word I think of is desperation. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, like I mentioned, I had this gym payment, and the company I was with before um, still wanted to use it, so they use it half the days, and I use it um, the other days. So mm-hmm. they had half the gym payment, but that was still over you know twenty five hundred a month. That mm-hmm. if I didn't come up with that in the end of you know, in the next month or two, then I'd have to pay that out of my own pocket, which is out of my wife's pocket. <laughs> so, um, you know, but it was really like, I got to get at least 20 kids in the next month. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, it was in money. Um, I had a little bit up, so we were good for a month or two. But um, you do different things when, you know, there's there's a deadline. So, Correct. you know, set, set deadlines, make sure you're working towards them. And like I said, it was like free clinics as much as possible, you know, mm-hmm. and there were a lot of people that were like, you're brand new, we don't trust you, so <laughs> we're out, but yeah. uh, there's a lot of kids that were like, well, we'll give you a chance, three months, you know, um, see how it goes, and then by the end of three months, they sign up for another year, so, um, yeah. you know, let's take what you get and just keep working until um, things start flowing. The first part's the hardest, like the first 20 kids is hardest, right, yeah. after kind of have some people to show results with you get referrals um but yeah just the desperation of the <laughs> having that payment um was mm-hmm. kind of um and and a new baby coming in a month so you know <laughs> there's a lot going on but um that's what uh, drove me to to do things i didn't like i don't like doing sales i hate sales mm-hmm. um right but because i had that deadline and that necessity to to make some money and get some kids um you know i just did it so yeah so so talk to us a bit about your your sales and marketing process how how are you gaining new clients where are they coming from yeah um so when i started um my plan with the split was i had some money saved up um to one cover the gym payment but two do some um, paid advertising which i had experience doing so i didn't have to hire anybody to do that mm-hmm. um, and then um, like i mentioned it was free clinics for the first two months um I did one paid camp, um, which I had one kid sign up from, but um, that was good. But everything was free. Um, it was all Facebook ads, um, pretty much to that point. And then um, from there, so like starting January, February, I had some more kids coming in. Um, my Instagram started getting bigger. Um, and that's not huge. I think I only have like 500 followers. So that's not big for some people, but um you know growing so um as i was watching going and watching games of the kids that i train um i would kind of watch the other teams and be like who's a, who's a good player on the other team that has some potential you know um, and then i would go follow them on instagram um you know i can't 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 really message people anymore until they follow you so um i had kind of had to wait for them to follow but then once they did and they were viewing my stories, I could just send them a message, say, Hey, I watched you play the other day. Um, thought you were great. I would love to help you um, get even better. Um, mm-hmm. I'm in for a free session. Um, and I think I've gotten, I think five or six kids from that. Um, and then it's just, again, it, it's hard to get started, but once that happens, I talked with Ben about it about a month ago. It, there's no like one right answer for getting kids. Right. 
Um, it's like, you don't need to be getting 10 kids a month from Facebook advertising. Mm -hmm. Instead, you can get two kids from that, two kids from referrals and two kids from clinics and two kids from Instagram, right? Um, and that's how it's been the past couple of months is just, you know, it feels like, it feels almost random sometimes where kids are coming from, but it's all up from the work of, you know, doing those four different things. So um, that's kind of the the biggest marketing thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. So when I talk to coaches on a regular basis, a lot of them ask me, how do I get clients through social media? Now, last week I spoke with actually a basketball uh, trainer. Uh, he has quite a big following on, on social media. He was up to like, I think 20, 20K. Yeah. But when we did a, a deep dive into his business, you know, he, he, he was only working with one or two clients. So what piece of advice would you give to any any trainer that is looking to use social media to to try and grow and and scale their business to try and get new clients i mean it depends on what you're going for like if you're going online stuff right then i think the huge following is is a big deal um but as far as like being local um you know i think it's more about finding the right connections right um and i know ben talks about that too but out of the you know, 500 something followers I have probably at least half 300 of them are in Utah and close enough to train with me. Um, so, you know, I value those 300 more than 10,000 people in Florida, right. <laughs> um, Cause they can't come with me. So, um, you know, and then it's, like I said, it, it's difficult. I'm starting to hit a cap. I've messaged just about everybody I can that is following me. Um, but you know, I'm planning to go watch games and uh, that's one of my favorite things to do. So like the AAU tournaments, that's the other good thing as far as, you know, kids are always caught up in it, but um, you go to an AAU tournament and there's several hundred kids playing at the same time. Um, you talk to parents, talk to coaches, you know, and it's um, super easy there. Um, and then, you know, follow them on Instagram. If you can send them a message, be like, Hey, I saw you play. Um, you know, that's, that's great. So that's, that's been the easiest way. Again, I'm starting to hit a cap with messaging people on Instagram, but, um, but at this point it's been good. I went, I went to each high school roster and just looked up every person that wasn't graduating and just followed each one mm -hmm. and that 20, 30 minutes. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but I got at least two people to sign up just from doing that. Okay. Good. Good. That's good. And it's good because you have an intent behind what you're doing now a lot of coaches what they do is they just upload these really cool videos and kind of just sit back and and hope something happens but you're actually intentional with the way you use it um so so it's really good and obviously it's working for you because you you have got results from it yeah and i actually i've been putting less effort into my posts um intentionally <laughs> just because it hasn't been worth it um and putting more focus into my stories and messaging yeah so i think it's um, a big thing as well awesome all right jesse well the last question for you where, where do you see your business in the next five years from now well that's that's a really cool thing is i could go a lot of different ways um so currently i'm only training two days a week um you know and i can get up to about 72 kids um which would get me well over a hundred thousand in revenue, um, per year. Um, so, you know, the choice is, do I want to just kind of stay there and stay with the two days and, um, you know, enjoy that having that much time off to be with my family. Um, I could hire, I'm planning right now. The tentative plan is to hire another trainer, um, to do those two days as well, to about 144 kids. Um, you know, and that could get up to hopefully over 200 K in revenue and, all that stuff. so i could go there or i could keep going from there hire more trainers get more gym time um and just keep going but um for now the plan is i think hire one more trainer stick with the two days um have the rest of the days to to be with my family and um you know i, I think i'll enjoy that you know i don't <laughs> i don't have a millionaire i don't i don't want to be like i don't really want to be an nba trainer you know famous yeah anything like that. I just want to kind of stick with the kids in my area and um, mm -hmm. 
a long term yeah. and view that. So that's kind of kind of where I'm at. But you know, growth growth and success is a little addicting. So uh, we'll get to that point. Awesome. So did did you think it was possible to train twice a week and have a have a successful business? Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and again, that was part of one of the reasons I left my previous one was it was two kids per session. Um, I was paying over fifteen hundred bucks a month for other trainers. Um, and I was still working 25, 30 hours a week, spending another 10, 15 hours trying to market and do sales and all that yeah. stuff. So much effort for so little profit. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, I kind of saw the vision of doing that. And, you know, I didn't, I'm not, I don't think I'm losing any results for my kids, right? I think it's just as good, if not better. Mm -hmm. uh, and I get to spend more time with my family and make more money. And, um, have a better life it, it was a huge difference so it's having like again just being able to know that there's somebody out there that's making twenty thousand dollars a month doing training right mm -hmm. i can get half of that i'm in good shape yeah absolutely absolutely because i mean what mo most trainers think out there is that to, to earn more you've got to work more yeah but the truth is if you have proper structure and systems in place then you can work less but earn more as well, which is essentially the the system you have in place. Yeah. So, so good luck. Keep keep up the great work. I'm obviously I follow you on in the community. I see everything you do, your posts, your wins. So keep up the great work, and yeah. thanks again for coming on, sharing with us uh, your journey, and hopefully I can bring you on in a year's year's time or in 12 months and we can, we can have another conversation and see where, where your business is uh, then. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, I've watched a lot of these, so it's cool to be a part of it. <laughs> so um, thanks for having oh. And one more thing, if any, if any trainer wants to connect with you, what, what is the, the best way to do that? Um, best way is probably just Instagram um, at ice underscore B ball. Um, so Pretty, logo's pretty recognizable so <laughs> um, should be fine but um, that's me send me a message um, I've had a couple people reach out to me um, from the group so shouldn't be fine awesome all right well thanks uh, thanks Jess again and uh, look forward to catching up with you in the near future will do thanks man take care